that's a question I could, you could, you could literally go next door and see Frankenstein, a 90 year old horror movie, classic horror movie. You could go next door and see Megan, a one, a one week old horror movie, and you said no, no. I want to see a 40 year old horror movie. And that was the right decision. And I, think so. I figured out, this is the first Friday the 13th that you could see this movie in LA in a 3D screening since the day it opened. That was the only, August 13th, 1984. That was the only other Friday the 13th that you could see this theater and see this in LA. So what a great day to see this movie. Uh, it looks fantastic. They have a new digital print that Paramount put out. It looks fantastic. I saw it at the Alamo Draft House back in September. They showed it on a Tuesday at 5 o'clock. I don't know what the Alamo was thinking. <laughs> like, they couldn't write it at 8 o'clock. No, Tuesday at 5 o'clock. There were 50 people in the theater. It sold out, but it was 50 people. Me and Mr. Brian Fuller was there, of course. <laughs> Creator of Hannibal, Pushing Daisies, and the upcoming Crystal Lake <laughs> TV series. And I spoke to Brian, and he has completed the scripts for the first five seasons of the show, and he's brought all those scripts here tonight. He's just going to throw them out here after the show, and you can read them, and you'll know everything that's going to happen. I wish that were true. Unfortunately, A24, which is producing the show, has has a guy with a spear gun in the back there, and if Brian says anything that he's not supposed to, it's just a spear gun right in the eye. So, so, but he, he, he has promised to reveal stuff that has never been revealed about the show tonight. Right, Brian? Yeah. 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 And we also have the, the great Tracy Savage is here. We're going to do a Q&A. We have a couple of good. Anybody come here from out of town? Yeah. Who, 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 who thinks they've come here the farthest? What? Oregon. How far? Oh. Portland. Portland. Anybody need Portland? Oh, Australia? Come on up, Australia. I have a prize for you. <laughs> it's a beautiful, it's a, it's a Jason bath bomb.
If you could only watch one movie in the theater, I think this would be the one, just to do the 3D, right? So, thank you all for joining us. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, I have a shitload of prizes to give away for, for uh, trivia, uh, courtesy of Screen Fest, our friends at uh, Horror Pack. Uh, so, uh, they're good stuff, so I'm going to ask tougher than usual questions. I know sometimes I let you guys off easy, but... Uh, famous movie out of first place at the box office. Yeah, this guy had his hand up before he even... E.T. E. It was the one to take down E.T. <laughs> Therefore, you get the Beetlejuice card scramble game. Makes sense. Good job. First of the late Friday 13 series. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause, Brian Fuller. And two of our unfortunate victims from the movie. Let's bring back Larry Zerner, who played Shelley, and welcome Tracy Savage, who played Debbie. Brian, you were here the other night for RRR. Is this, is this the best? But this was better, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry, RRR. Although Jason throwing a leopard at another person would have been pretty cool. Uh, Brian, I want to start with you. Now, I know the series is unique with a lot of fans in that a lot of them didn't kind of experience them in order. I was curious, what was your intro to the series? Was it this film? Was it a different one? Uh, my intro was the first one, uh, and I read it before I saw it. So I read it in Famous Monsters, which did synopses. So I was obsessed with Mrs. Voorhees from the age of 10, which was probably three years before I saw the movie. So it was all about Famous Monsters. Um, uh, uh, for Tracy and Larry, um, I'm just curious, how did you guys get involved in the film? Were you familiar with the first two at all, or was it just completely new to you? Um, I've been a child actress since I was two years old, and had done lots of television, Little House on the Prairie, lots of wholesome stuff. Little House on the Prairie, and going way back to Marcus Welby and Adam Twelve, and um, and so I worked a lot as a child actress, and I was getting ready, actually, to move away to Michigan to go to college mm -hmm. in Ann Arbor. And um, my mom was an agent at the time. She said, they're making this movie, and they're casting, and you should probably go out on the interview. Um, but I'm like, oh, Mom, I could have done with acting. I'm moving away. Uh, but I went on the interview. It was titled Crystal Japan because they were sort of hiding the title for a while, the real name. Um, and I got cast, and I got hired, and I thought, well, this will pay for a semester or two at uh, University of Michigan. So I ended up um, working on the film. I still wasn't really sure what it was in the beginning. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the horror genre, but now I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, anyway, that's how I got uh, yeah, my casting story is kind of interesting. I think a lot of people know it, but um, I was 18. I was a you know, wannabe actor here in LA. Like, you know, grew up in LA and uh, studying theater at CSUN and had a job handing out uh, movie tickets, you know, to, to, to previews, like you all, you know, you see, you want to go to the movie. Mad Max. And I was in Westwood on a Saturday night handing out tickets to a Australian movie called The Road Warrior that no one had heard of and no one wanted to see. And um, these people came up to me. And so, you know, it's like, like I looked like that, right? I got the pro and I'm fat and, I'm, you know, that's it. And these people came up to me and go, are, are you an actor? And I'm like, you know, well, they must have seen me in Greece at Fairfax High because I rocked it. <laughs> um, so I'm like, yeah, I'm an actor. And they're like, well, we wrote this movie, and we think you'd be really good at it. And that was uh, Marty Catrosser and Carol Watson, and they had written it, and they just saw me, and were like, yeah, that's the guy. You know, it's like <laughs> pro, act, want to be actor, Shelly, that's him. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, and, and I gave my agents, I had an agent, and they gave my name, and a couple of days later, I got a call to go down and audition. So I still have an audition, but uh, it was really like, Band, they're just like meant to be in this movie, and uh, yeah, so it happened. 
So the next time somebody's handing you out passes, just like take note of them because they might end up being in you know one of the conjurings or some shit like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Tracy, I want to skip right up to your death scene because, like as we talked about in the trivia, it's, it's a, it was a famous you know, recreation of, of Kevin Bacon's death. Uh, but you got to lay in a bed, you were in a hammock. What was that? What was that process like? I can imagine that was very comfortable. It was. Um, it was really crazy. It was a, a crazy day of shooting. It took all day to shoot that like what two second shot, um, and it took uh, months of prep before. Basically, I'm giving away the film secret, but basically what they did is they um, created a replica of my torso from my hips up to my neck and made a foam rubber copy of my entire upper body. And then they glued it to my neck so that this upper torso is attached here and sticking out there. They cut a hole in the hammock and I got down underneath, kind of my body was under the hammock and the fake part of the body was out on top of the hammock, except for my arms and my shoulders. And that gave a little play between where my real neck was and the neck of the little replica. And so they could push the knife up through there. But of course, the whole deal was trying to make sure that the knife worked, that the um, scene, you couldn't see the scene from the fake neck to the real neck, and that the 3D, you know, the knife coming out, um, you want to make sure that was right. So it was literally a day long on set trying to shoot that. I was in the makeup chair for probably six hours as they were putting the, and they really had one chance to get it. Um, I think they made two of those foam replicas of my chest, but they really wanted to do it in, in one take. And by the way, that foam, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I sent it actually to my then fiance, who's living in Michigan. <laughs> As a present, I put lace around. I really did. I swear to God. I, I, it was, I was in California. He was in Michigan. So I sent him my chest. <laughs> Long distance relationship tips from the masters. Uh, and then, and Larry, you didn't get a death at all. I mean, you got the appliance from your neck. But w w did you ever have a death scene? Was it restricted or anything? Or was it always meant to be an off screen? Yeah, unfortunately, it's always it's always it was always an off screen. People always ask me like, did, did they ever film that scene in the barn? They did not. They were, that was it. I, I come in and because it's like, is he faking it or not? I mean, I, I don't know. At this point, you think you know he's not faking it, but that's the that was the fun deal. Um, Ron, I want to get your opinion on this. Now, this this movie introduces one of I think cinema's greatest monsters, which is Rick. Uh, he's such a fucking asshole. <laughs> I, I was sad because I ran out to get to get another drink, and I was like, I ran him back, and I got here just in time to see him die. I'm like, oh, thank God, because you, like you really just want to see this dude get it. Like, what is? Like, she's like, Rick, stay with me. Why should I? Like, he's. I was just curious. Can we get your thoughts on on Rick and some of the other maybe the you know, the, the less wholesome characters of the series? Uh, I actually find a lot of the characters to be more wholesome than what their reputations are and Rick's just kind of douchey and like making a comment about the weight and, and all of that. Uh, <laughs> so it was fun to see him die more than uh, Chuck and Chili who were my uh, point of view characters for the film. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that to the nerds. Uh, uh, I did want to ask the two of you about uh, Richard uh, Brooker, who passed away uh, a few years ago. Um, obviously, he didn't probably get to work with him too much, but maybe just memories from set or anything. By all accounts, he was like a really great, kind of funny guy. He, you know, in, in, the, in this genre, he's a legend. Everybody knows and knew of him and was sad when he passed away. For me, on the set, um, I didn't engage with him much. First of all, we were all in our teens, and he was probably 30. Um, he was a professional. He was an, uh, a professional acrobat and um, kind of stayed in character the whole time. And he kept, at least as far as I was concerned, he kind of kept his distance from us. And he didn't hang out with us dumb kids. He was just kind of doing his own thing. So 
I didn't um, really ever get to engage much with him, but I know that the fans just love him, and uh, it's too bad that he's not here. Yeah, ne neither of us have any actual scenes with Richard during the film. We'd see him, he'd be, he'd be with his makeup on and smoking a pipe. He smoked a pipe, <laughs> it's kind of weird to see him smoking a pipe. Um, and then I didn't see him again until uh, there was a screening of the new art in 2002. Anybody was anybody there? And 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 me and Richard and Paul Kratka and Steve Susskind came. That was the first time I had seen him and actually talked to him because we never <laughs> talked on the thing. And then you know we go to conventions and then we sort of became friendly at conventions. And I, he was here at the. The 25th anniversary, we were right at in this theater, um, right? Someone? Right? right? Yep. I was having a small theater. He was here at the Chinese for the for, uh, 2007, and he was there. Um, you know, he was a great guy. He actually won an Emmy for uh, um, uh, uh, something he invented, uh, some kind of uh, film process. He was a very talented guy. Uh, can I say a question for you? Uh, one kind of bummer note in this movie is that your character's pregnant, so Jason actually kind of gets another victim in the way there. Uh, uh, Dana Kimmel, but uh, Chris, has talked about how she had some concerns about some of her character's uh, things in the script that she wasn't comfortable with. Did you remember ever having any conversations about the pregnancy thing, or was it just like, eh, that's fine? I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I didn't have any conversations. <laughs> Give me the script. I'm here to have fun. I'm moving away to Michigan when this movie's over, and I'm moving on with my life. And this is just a great way to spend six weeks with, you know, a big group of young people. I mean, the director and producers were in their 20s. They were kids. And um, so, no, I really didn't um, question the script much. I just showed up. The shower scene and the sex scene were a little tricky. I was really just... Be, you know, I'd just become an adult. I didn't have my mom on set with me, which I had done since I was two years old. And I knew I wanted to go on and be, become a journalist, a broadcaster, which I did for 30 years. And I didn't, I didn't, and I didn't, um, I didn't really want my face being shown while I'm having an orgasm so that the whole world would see, and that would be me for the rest of my life. And if I went on to be a broadcaster somewhere, that clip would come up. So it, I just like, so could you, could you figure something out? But I was a kid, and I'm trying to negotiate this without my mom and without my agent there. And um, so as you saw, we, we, they had a shot of our feet. <laughs> and I was actually able to talk them into doing that and just, you know, just showing our feet as opposed to our face. And um, so that was tricky. I mean, as, as a young kid, I'm trying to like, I really don't want my face shown while you're doing this. And is there something we can do that's different? And um, and then the shower scene. Um, my teenage son has still not seen this movie. Yeah, but he had to work, so it's all good. <laughs> um, and uh, Larry, I wanted to know one thing about this movie when I watch it now after a few years is. Whenever somebody like walks in the barn, I'm thinking about the video game. We got some people who play the game. Who else wishes the barn had a goddamn door in the game, right? They close the darn door every time they walk in. This game. Anyway, uh, can you you recreated Shelly for the game, and I use you quite a bit, and I won once with you. Usually you're the first to die, but that's fine, because I get to watch like a little mini Friday the 13th movie after. Uh, I was just wondering if you could talk about that process a bit, because it's really the only new Friday stuff we've gotten in a while. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big gamer, and when they announced the game, I, I had a mutual friend who knew the guys at Gun who, who created the game, and we uh, they introduced me very, they had a, they had a, not even a beta, they had an alpha demo. They, they were too poor to go into E3, they were here for E3, they just had a condo off E3, and I got right there and saw it, and I was like, I was like, this is not going to work. <laughs> I remember going, this is not going to work. But then, then the game came out, and it was great, and I and I met the guys and, and sort of befriended them. We were at Comic-Con, and then they were like, well, let's put Shelly in the game. And I'm like, great. Uh, great. How much do you want? And they're like, no, no, we're going to pay you. I'm like, oh, God. This is like the best. <laughs> they were hoping a video game, and they were going to pay me. Um, so I didn't do, they had, it's, the animation's all the same for all the, they had one animation for all the, 
Cambridge, but I got to go in and do the vocal, which was which was really challenging as an actor. I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of inspiring actors or professional actors here. It's it's tough because you, you're doing like every emotion in like like you know.
you know, the delivery wasn't right or we fumbled along and it didn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it is what it is because that's the 3D is still such a great effect and it's the star of the movie. So we're not going to win any awards for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best 3D movie show in the theater tonight. There you go. <laughs> and do you know at the time oh. it was the highest grossing 3D film ever at the time in 1982? <laughs> Like the 2000s, it was yeah. the highest grossing 3D movie ever. In fact, they're showing a feature from the Black Lagoon in 3D here tonight on like 11 o'clock if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Thrilled because Larry's done an invaluable service for the fans over the years. As you know, that there's been a lawsuit going on that's kept us from having new Jason Adventures. And anytime there's a new development in that case, all the fans kind of look at this legal document that they post online and we're all like, yeah, I don't understand how any part of this. And Larry, the saint that he is, who is a lawyer, uh, gets online and explains it all to us. I'm just curious, are you happy you don't have to do that anymore? Uh, no. Uh, well, I'm happy the lawsuit is over. Uh, you know, I, 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 left, well, I left acting and I became a copyright lawyer and an entertainment lawyer, and that's what I do. And, you know, this was like, oh, my jams are together, copyright law and Friday the Teeth, and I was like, this is the best. So I'm a little, I'm a little upset. I, I, I want there to be another lawsuit. In <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I'm, glad it's, I'm glad it's over so we can get the series. I want to know about the series. Brian, tell us everything you can tell us about the series. I, I can tell you a couple of things I asked permission this morning. First of all, this is this is the first excursion of the writing staff. So we have uh, many of the writing staff here. Oh. Uh, I think we know uh, we're, we're starting in two weeks officially. So, uh, but this was our first kind of group outing. And uh, the things that I've gotten permission to share about the show, and if, if people want to ask questions, I can say yes or no, I can't answer them. But the things I can share uh, that I'm very excited about is that we will have two scores. We will have a modern score and a classic score composed by Harry Manfredi. So you can watch both versions on the cock, as it were. <laughs> uh, uh, well, we'll see, because it certainly uh, supports the time period in which we're telling the story. Um, and uh, Kevin Williamson is going to be writing a script for us, and that's very exciting. Uh, and the third tidbit, uh, Adrian King has a recurring role in, uh, in the first season. So that's kind of going to come through as I... I love that first movie. I love all of the movies, but that first movie is really close. Rank them right now. <laughs> and you, you, you didn't have Larry's phone number at that time when you were casting for the first season. Oh, no, you just. I can't see what you mean. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's a good one. But you didn't find my phone. Maybe he'll show up. Yeah. Maybe he'll show up. He, he didn't know how to reach me either. Take it right. Mm -hmm. You better hurry. We're not getting any younger, buddy. <laughs> I know the writing staff is out there going. I, I think we can make Larry a recurring character. Semi, <laughs> semi regular. Okay, you guys. I, I, I got money. <laughs> <laughs> the cast needs a lawyer. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Um, we have time for a few questions from the crowd. I saw your hand right there, sir. Huh? Yep. Where are you guys shooting? Where are you guys shooting the TV show? ways away, uh, likely Canada, honestly, because our money will go further and we've got a very generous budget from the Peacock, but uh, we want to spend a lot of money on casting, so uh, we want to put it on screen in all sorts of ways. The, uh, we have one season that is ordered to production and another season that Peacock has to pay a very heavy penalty for, and when I pitched the show, I pitched four seasons. Eight, eight episodes and some change. Canada's <laughs> winning shot, Jason takes Manhattan, so I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's Crystal Lake. Crystal Creek. Crystal Creek.
Yeah, I mean, I heard that, but we were we weren't there. And, we would have been, yeah. We would have known. <laughs> but I never, yeah. Um, there would have been no reason. Yeah, I don't. Know. Mm -hmm. the, the question was, would it someone else play Jason in the movie in the, in the scene? Yeah. All right. But we weren't there, so.